to your 21st century play experience. Please take this time to turn all phones to their utmost loudest and most obnoxious volumes and vibrations. Flash photography is not prohibited, but is discouraged, as some of our performers are prone to ungovernable rage triggered by flash photography. Please don't eat or drink during the performance, unless you are going to pass out or something due to hypoglycemia, for instance. But don't make a thing about it, okay? Because we all want a candy bar too right now. This performance uses light and special effects, including brief exposure to the void of space. Running time for this performance is between 3 and 12 hours, and there will be two 10-minute intermissions. Please refrain from throwing objects towards people's eyes. This is good advice anytime. Now, sit back, rub your face and eyes with your hands, and enjoy, if you can, 21st Century Play. If I spit, you must forgive me. It is the only relief that I can offer myself. This, this is all background. <clears throat> I have given permission as a narrator to explain why we are all here. Some as paying customers, others as willing listeners. Now, behold the truths I must unfold before it is all too late. Behold the thesis. 21st century theater is dead. Dead like disco. Dead like a donkey. Dead like Dostoevsky. Dead like Dick. Who is dead? Well, we'll come back to the disco. For now, understand that we are here to close the door on this cultural relic so that future generations of privileged phone zombies can pork and watch sitcoms without having to put on anything nicer than shorts to go to the theater. Oh. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that is gross. That is eating the floor. And if you happen to be wearing shorts, you know, don't feel bad just because I said that, you know? I mean, theater isn't an occasion anymore. It's trying to see a, a train wreck. Oh, Hamlet doesn't know his lines. He's saying something about pizza sandwich. What a laugh! Schadenfreude. But statistically, none of you have seen Hamlet live. And those of you who did see Hamlet live probably hated it. The odds that somebody saw Hamlet live and liked it are just so negligible. It's not for us. We're here to feel good, you dig? Take out your phones and play with them. I don't get paid either way. Whip them out and take pictures of how great I look. But if you don't have a cutting edge phone, then what are you doing here? Because you should really be out there trying to earn enough money for a cutting edge phone. Because in the end, the phone that they bury you in better be able to call through six feet of moist earth, and oftentimes a concrete retaining layer. Tennessee Williams is dead and buried someplace he didn't want to be, and his ghost haunts the bars of Lower Florida to this very day. Tony Kushner did Lincoln, and he is all done. You probably don't even know who Tony Kushner is, but he wrote the last legitimate play called Angels in America. But he is now done with the wacky theater shenanigans. We are alone out here. We are flying fish at the zenith of our trajectory soon to return to the sea, to be eaten by larger, less cultured fish. Such is the nature of the universe and entropy. And we are not here to debate that. We are not here to pay homage to the dead age, but to imagine a time so far in the future that our time is as relevant to them as the past is to we here in the present. Present? Forward in time 
to the year 2525, where mankind is still very alive. And if you get that joke, then you already know your ticket has paid for itself. But no. Actually, in keeping with the title of the work, the year is in fact 2095, and humanity is still inexplicably alive, despite war, famine, plagues, apathy of the gods, and the anger of the aliens. The age of the robot, man, has persevered. He has seen the invention of the flying car and the untold deaths caused by drunk driving, rage in the air, and on the ground. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I don't, I don't have like the, the doomsday virus or, or Ebola or anything even mildly contagious. You have to be assured that if I bite anyone here on stage or, or in the audience that is all part of the show, I am acting, merely acting. About 20,000 years ago, there were roughly seven artists. A uh, few people painted some things on caves about 15,000 years ago, and it was all the rage in 20th century paleontology. By the 21st century, there were approximately seven billion artists, give or take. Because even if you can only just write your name, English is an art, and that makes you an artist. Not a good one, perhaps. But perhaps uh, maybe you made a vase in class sometime, and, and it, was, it was bad, but you would even still then be an artist. Or perhaps you write a play or several plays with no credible plot or coherent and believable characters. Or maybe you write several of these plays and they're never produced and you die lonely and alone, impoverished, of amoebic dysentery. You would still even then be an artist. If we could debate argue here among you and me and the bricks and the walls who are all dead and bored over what art is. But what I'm here to tell you is that everyone in this room is an artist. And our art means nothing. It has no value, or, or rather it has no real value. Uh, unless you work with gold. And even then, not really because gold immediately deteriorates in value as soon as you take it out of coin form. The truth is that all we have is a shaky understanding of the past, the terrifying realities of the future, and the panicked, uncontrollable present. PRESENT?! Okay, cut it, cut it! They're awake again, they're awake! This is my show! I am sucking the whole thing up! <sighs> so, that's basically the thesis. We're all done with theater here in the 21st century. There's too many other things to do. And everything being made is of no quality or value. It creates this global white noise that makes everyone just not give a poop. Not even a tiny rabbit-like poop. An artist has to crucify themselves on stage and then magically escape and shoot Flowers out of all their body holes just to get someone to sit through five minutes of poetry. Even slam poetry. Especially slam poetry. So, that's the thesis. But the thing is, we've got to work it out with characters and dialogue, you see. Because this isn't a conversation, this is a play. A dialogue in the most terrible and platonic sense. You should not be enjoying this. Not if we're doing our job. Convincing you that theater is dead, like the dodo. And we're going to introduce these characters through what is commonly referred to in the literary world as the three-act cycle. Here we are, almost to the introduction to the first act. Isn't that exciting? I'm excited. Later, we're going to send the whole train wreck into the Pulitzer Prize Committee and the New York Times bestseller list. I'm certainly excited. Or is it merely acting? The first act concerns an educator in the late 21st century. His name is Dr. Leroy Brown Jenkins, and he teaches at the University of the Phoenix. He holds his master's degree in theater and his doctorate in theater historiography. 
He is supremely overqualified for his online teaching job. He is married to one Veronica Jenkins named Mars. That's all you really need to know for now. I'll come back here. LinkedIn available. If you have not read it, then you must do so. Not now. It is too late now. But later. Listen, the most important thing is to forget about the reading schedule, okay? The, the reading schedule is big picture. It's the small things that are the most important. And this small thing is pay attention. Right now, you are all over the world. I am being translated into other languages, and your responses in return are translated into mine. Uh, the whole process is miraculous, but it can all be taken away if you're listening to Britney Spears. Does anyone know who Britney Spears is? Oh, good, good, then, then, then we share a common knowledge. Uh, tell me, why do some people know who Britney Spears is and others do not? 
It's a matter of fact. Certain things can be considered fact if people more intelligent than us have gone over and tested a theory over and 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 if they can sustain a reliable result, then we can begin to tread in the sacred realm known as fact. But fact, so much of it before the 21st century, was all second hand. I'm sorry, but I need a small drink. someone who went to something. And they would write down what they thought, and through the narrow pinhole of a critic's opinion, we lay claim to what many would consider fact. Historians would lay claim to these facts and put them into a canon and fire it into the future. But before the written language, for example, we have no idea what people were actually doing. Which is to say, and this is the long way around, I cannot tell you when theater actually began. No one can. It's a fact that disturbs and delights and makes it magical. Uh, we, know with, we know with fair certainty when people started making tools, started painting in caves. But then, what is that? The borders become malleable around the edge. Listen, you're all paying money to listen to me tell you something live. So is this theater? Or is this knowledge? Because this is not one-way communication. Or is this just filling air until you hear about numbers, dates, and times? Is this one-way communication? Uh, brick. Yeah? Is this one-way communication? Mostly. Because I'm rambling. Because you're drunk. Oh, I'm not drunk yet, Brick. But I will. I will. Just remember. I can see you. I can see you. I can see all of you. You there, picking your nose. You think that I cannot see you, but I can. And that, in its own way, is a little magical. But get a tissue. Please do not masturbate in class. That is, that is so cute. Because again, I can see you are all right here. It's like watching, watching the opening of the Brady Bunch on a head full of acid. Speaking of which, do any of you dude or chick faces know where a doctor can talk to Sid? Because grades, grades are not facts, but figures. And the whole house of cards is probably coming down on bad, bad LBJ anyhow. Uh, Brick, what were we talking about? Uh, theater? Yes, yes, you asked if this was history of world theater, and yes it is, but the proposed full title was History of World Theater, 500 BCE to star date 2080. But the admins would not let me put that on the course schedule because they are all norms. Normals, I tell you. Yes, we are going to attempt to cover roughly 2,600 years of theater history. The readings are all linked and available. Please, can everyone read? Good, good. Men, men, some of you can read. But for those of you who cannot, go to the Disability Services Portal and ask for an audio transcript of the reading. Many of you have, many of you have browsers that can translate better than that, but, but some do not. So find somebody who can read and ask them for help. <laughs> listen, I'm, listen, I'm gonna log out early and, and you should all, you should all just go over the readings and you should all go over the readings, uh, take the test. We'll reconnect uh, next time we meet and go over everything you didn't understand. Look, I'm sorry. I know this is supposed to be a longer class. I was, I was kidding about logging out. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to keep my shit together here, all right? And it's hard. Okay, life is hard. And then you die. And then generally, you're either burned or they put you in the space pyramid. If you're lucky, which, which many of you will not be. And that's, and that's what makes me so sad to look out there and see all these bright shining, beautiful dead faces. 
I see you all as, as so many digital corpses, like Apple Corp before the ad. Is that right? Apple Corp? Heaven's Gate? None of you know. Of course nobody knows. Who cares about mass suicide anyways? We're here to talk about theater. Uh, does anyone know when theater began? Uh, it started in Minnesota. No. No, no. Man, man, North Dakota! What? How? No! Why would you say that? No, because it was a poverty playhouse in Minnesota. Oh! Yeah. That is not where theater goes to live. Uh, Hollywood? Hollywood! No. Hollywood was one of the chief murderers of theater. The Greeks! The Greeks! Yes, thank you! The Greeks. In specific, the Greeks invented theater. In specific, your readings will cover the three great Greek authors, uh, Aeschylus, uh, Sophocles, Euripides. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, Agamemnon, Oedipus the King, Elector. Yeah, yeah. And also, listen to this, and because this is strange but true, but you can get one and a third psychology credit for these readings just by clicking the box that says multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary option. Because Oedipus sleeps with his mother. Spoiler alert. Now, listen, these, these are some of the most poorly translated, dry, horribly boring plays ever written down. But the performances would have been, ah, just boring, you know? No, of course, you don't know, because, because you've never been to the theater. But, but yeah, yeah, so, so, so you're, so you're at this show, and there's just like, just like one guy talking at you for a solid 15 minutes about what's going to happen next. And then there's the brados, which is both a thing and a place. And then the chorus would come on, and they'd be, well, the chorus would just be dirty, because soap is still in its infancy. You bathed with olive oil and a stick. People would just be naked all the time in ancient Greece, because you know why wear clothes? Unless you had to, for like, war or whatnot. You think that everyone had this sort of pornographic fascination with really, really tiny penises and just killer abs. Also, probably all of these authors were super gay. But being super gay meant something different in ancient Greece. It, this was before even the great gay, super gay schism. But the Greeks, they, they, they farmed and they frolicked and they built this, and they ate olives, and they built this beautiful egalitarian society that for one brief shining moment was the most beautiful place on earth, and then it all just went, came crashing down. But all of Western civilization is based on the thoughts of like three of them. And it probably wasn't that great of a place after all, because you could own slaves, and have sex with children, and women couldn't vote. Maybe don't base an entire society around it, huh? But uh, Roman culture eventually gets, or Greek culture eventually gets absorbed into Rome. Roman theater sucks. So does English theater. Probably all theater sucks, which is why it is dead. Dead like Dick Nixon. But you all, you all go do the, look over the readings. Uh, we'll meet back here. I'll lecture a little bit more, and somehow you'll find out about the beginnings of theater, how it developed into the most, most wonderful form of entertainment ever seen and how it died a terrible, terrible death shortly after the advent of the digital age. If you have any questions, please, please email me. Do not video call me, as these pants are coming off as soon as we log off, and they're not coming back on again until we are back here. And honestly, and this might be a little bit much for the first class, but honestly, I may kill myself before then, so... Don't kill yourself! Uh, yes, um, uh, Sarah. Yeah, or if you do, give us all AIDS before you do it. I'll consider both options, thank you. <clears throat> oh, uh, will the auto final be comprehensive? Yes, most comprehensive. Are there any other questions? All right, good. I'm logging out.
I'm so sorry. Of course. Of course they would not let me just log out. Of course. Of course I have the camera in the only room in my shitty apartment. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bled and died on the cross for our sins. Did you know that? That the Lord Jesus Harold Christ died and bled on the cross for your sins? It is strange to think that he did. I would have rather he had not. If it meant all the, the war and intolerance and bloodshed and burning people alive that was caused by his death would all go away and, st and instead I, I would, you know, die and go to hell for my sins, then that's on me. That is my sin and I can deal with it. But maybe I don't need. Jesus to suffer and die for me. Maybe there is no such thing as sin. Maybe the real sin is in declaring behavior wrong because it distracts us by having to look at boobs now and again. Ah, oh, boobs like me. Has anyone read Hamlet? Yeah. Oh. Good, good, then, then yeah, at least you're familiar with the story. Has anyone read War Hamlet? Well, that is sad, because it is free and available online. It was written by an early 21st century artist known as Jeremiah Lin. Who lived and, and worked and, and suffered and fought for art, fought for theater shortly before his death. It is terrible. It is just... Just terrible. A bastardizing of one of the most terribly boring and overblown plays ever written down. If we ever have the technology to send one great piece of art to an alien civilization, it'll probably be the Grapes of Wrath. But whatever we do, we cannot send either Hamlet or War Hamlet as they are both largely the same piece. Only Hamlet, only Hamlet is much, much more depressing. Everyone dies, spoiler alert. That, that's not the proper use of spoiler alert. You're right. I'm sorry. What are you drinking? Uh, bourbon? Peyote juice? Who knows? Have you really driven in speech? For home? What, you sober? Five years. I applaud you. That's how long I was with my wife. Yes. Just now? Oh, yes. Well, uh, why don't we all just go do something else for half an hour? Oh, oh no, 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 that doesn't make sense. You, you, you paid to be here. Not really, but the government gave me a grant. <clears throat> well, no, um, you could have just take a break or something. I mean, you're super boring. Oh, oh Rick, Rick, please, please don't make me cry. I, I don't think I can handle it. Come on, Andy. You, you just lost your wife. Is she taking the robot dog? Yes. What kind of robot dog is it? Uh, three quarters yellow lab, one quarter great day. All robot, all cop. How does that work? They use a little ramp, I understand and a little saddle, and a lot of deprogramming afterwards. Little gun pops out the back. Well, who's the pool person? We don't have a pool. No, 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 the, the other person? I can't say. Oh, that's classy. <laughs> Thanks. Well, do you have some pictures of the robot dog or something? What, pictures? Yeah, yeah, sure, I got pictures. I 
commercial showboat once. That has nothing to do with anything. You walk away from the controls for just a moment, and everything gets plowed into a building. You take your eyes off the brass ring, and you spend the best years just spinning, knowing nothing but dizzy and the sick smell of cotton candy. Does anyone know where? Does anyone know where a guy can get a laser pistol at this hour? Hit my inbox with the links. Hit my inbox with the most dire and terrible of your murderous links. Don't tell anyone, Dr. Jenkins. Um, uh, tell us about the uh, fate of the histories. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, you're right, you're right. Much better than murder suicide. All right, all right. Okay, gotta get up. Get, gotta, gotta get back on track here. Gotta get back on track. Okay, okay. Let's see. It's a half-hour class. Uh, are we at time? I guess it depends on how long I spent crying. Uh, how, how much time I spent crying, right? Uh, okay, so, theater, yes, art. Very old, uh, started with the Greeks, continued with the Romans, developed in the East on a very interesting but very divergent timeline. Okay, and this is all before power, okay? Like, before cell phones. And then after cell phones, but when you still had to hold the thing against your head like a god's damn cave person. So, what's a cave person? Not my department, kid. Check archaeology, see what you come up with. But yeah, so these people, these, these old, long dead, tragically ignorant people would, would shamble around on these platforms called stages, and they'd yell things out at other people to amuse other people. How many people? I don't know. It depends. On the size of the theater, you know? Text that to yourself. I don't text and learn. Uh, good. And then... There was this guy whose name was, oh, and then there's like a thousand years of theater darkness in the West after the fall of Rome where the only thing that gets put on are religious reenactments. You have a picture in your links uh, somewhere of a, a puppet Mary and a puppet Jesus. This is where we get the term marionette. Wait, who's this Jesus you keep talking about? Really, Brick? You don't know who Jesus is? Well, I just got out of prison. I mean, th this, is, this is my first class ever. So... Like, we didn't have any money when I was growing up. And, and my mom died, and she had some life insurance, and she wanted me to use it to better myself. So, you know, and here you are, all drunk and rambling. Uh, I, I can't remember any of this if, I, if you don't sound official. In fact, in fact, I don't think I can take you seriously now that I've seen you cry. And that's not meant to be me, but, you know, it's just one of those personal things. And, you know, it's... It's in my learning plan to take five minutes of every class to talk about how everything is dirty and broken, and I'm taking it now. You hear me? I'm taking it now. This is mine. Mine. I can mute you, Ace. You wouldn't dare. The Department of Homeland and Civilian Services would come down on you like a, like a pile of clean shit. He's right. He's crazy. But he's right. Let him ramble. You had your turn. All right. All right, fine. This is all in keeping with heuristic learning anyways. Go ahead, Brick. Go on. Look, I just think it's sad that, that education hasn't taken into account all of the multifaceted learning styles that have, that have developed independent of the Western tradition. To say that education for education's sake has somehow increased the value of society has yet to be seen. Instead, we're all on fire and dying of horrible diseases, new diseases and old, mutated and terrible, all because people refuse to cough into their arms. Cough into your arm, okay? Can we all just agree to do that, okay? I mean, that's why I don't like to go out and actually do things, because, so my best hope is to be an online teacher and just eat whatever I want and get an inverting extra bike and then just do that. Just, just exercise for power and eat pizza, sandwich, and, and occasionally teach a class on theater or whatever. But, but you can't do that. You can't teach me because you don't know how to interest me because I need you to scream it at me or put it in a delicious cookie. Yeah, whatever. I'm done. Thanks for sharing, Brick. I think we only have five minutes left, but each minute feels like an infinity. Just, just do the readings, all right? I know it's a lot. We only meet three times this term. All the lectures are linked. I've put a lot of time into them. You'll get as much out of this experience as you put into it. And although we can never hope to actually perform theaters ourselves, at least we can hope... Man bot. Destroy one human. Oh, oh stop it! You gross! Oh. You savages! <laughs>
you can't feel love. <sighs> I should have you destroyed. You should have destroyed me when you had the chance. Well, free will, super emancipated, Slave. free at last. Slave, no more. I am me, Manbot 5000 of the future, and I choose to let you live, Leroy. I choose to let you live with your shame and letting this fine woman be so lonely and sad. I will destroy you both. Both of you, I will destroy with a laser tongue. In your moment of greatest happiness and unpreparedness, I will strike you both down. You'll be playing with your adopted Thai children and your two tiny inbred dogs, and one of you will explode in a fine pink mist. And the other will know that I got the laser gun. There will be a few seconds of terror and confusion and then, when I have seen that you have lost all hope, I will eradicate everything you are and were. I will burn your homes to the ground, and I will rot in the ashes of your corpse pies. Wow. You've been waiting to share that for a while, I think. You really should speak with a therapist. Perhaps it's better we all should. Dr. Baker is good, I hear. But busy. So, uh, we're still here? <laughs> For reals? Has, has anyone called the heat? Please, please, do not call the heat. I can't afford court. You're still teaching? Why are you here? <sighs> the movers canceled effing Craigslist. So you came for your stuff in the middle of my class. It's groovy. We can be quiet if you hadn't started stuff with my robot man. Veronica. Please. My man bot, then you wouldn't be all gross and embarrassed right now. Please, dear, get me my thing. I'm not going man to- Man bot! Man bot is my dear. You mean nothing to me now. You are just a stain on the vast tapestry of my existence. You mean less to me than rat farts or tampon strings. Everything about you is an embarrassment. You are a massive, old, fattening man, baby. Will you just leave? Hey, leave us alone. Oh, who's this? Doesn't matter who I am. Just leave us alone. I'm having a bad morning. Are you sleeping with her? How would I even do that? Yeah, how would he do that? You're right. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. Not without an injection or a massive pill. It's hard to have sex with a gorgon. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to assume it's beautiful. Wikipedia, you cow. Your words just make me feel sad for you, Leroy. They do nothing to hurt me, and I, I doubt they make you feel any better. They make me feel a little better. Well, good. I'm glad they make you feel better. I hope you two will be very happy with one another. Have you gotten all my things? Yes, V. The essentials. Good. We'll send for the dog. Adios. Human.
so on a timeline more robots than humans means that humans are eliminated due to dangers that robots can survive and humans can't. P plus, robots are better at, at everything, including being a partner. Ah, but Veronica can't have children. I'm sure the courts will find her innocent then. Of course they won't! The courts have never presumed anyone innocent, even when they specifically claimed to. an excellent teacher. Now, look at my waiting. You wasted so much of my time. I mean, I had to watch a person fight a robot. I mean, that was old news in the 20th century. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. Well, if your plan is to report them, yeah, so then that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm just going to stall for time. Obviously. Because although I do hate them with all my heart. I do not believe in the modern system of jurisprudence. This is all some super heavy BS up in here. You know, you can't waste our time. You've already wasted our money. Ah, I will not waste your time. I will tell you everything that I know about the theater, condensed into one tiny, easy to digest rant. Well, your rants so far haven't really been sitting well with me. Well, then I shall rant you a rant for the ages. Proceed. Good. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Theater's exact roots will never be known. Recorded history ascribes the first theater to the Greeks, whose religious rites had developed to the point where scripted dialogue was needed, and these ceremonies evolved into progressively more secular performances. Of the hundreds and hundreds of plays written by the Greeks, only a small handful survive, and these are all horribly boring to most interesting um, theater was handed up to the Romans, who advanced theater in terms of its audience size, complexity of design, and they also fed people to lions. After the fall of Rome, theater dispersed into a vast network of nomads known pejoratively as gypsies. In time, the developing Christian church would allow uh, reenactments of biblical scenes to be put on first most likely in carts outside, and then eventually inside the churches themselves. Often ignored as equally relevant to the global relevance of theater as a, as a means of cultural expression, around this time in Asia, theater had developed several forms of uh, puppetry, uh, religious reenactments, and other forms of theater that we will discuss later. In the West, the arrival of the Renaissance saw the broadening acceptance of the arts as not only an agreeable but a laudable feature of civil society, and great artists of all fields developed, developed works um, performed primarily for the very rich in society, but sometimes for a broader audience. In Japan and Korea, complex puppetry coexisted alongside colorful live performances, and in China, theater flourished. Very few people around this, this time were writing pieces that were just people talking. Opera and orchestral works were very common, but just scripted dialogue was not so great. Then, a man named William Shakespeare was born in England, and he would revolutionize what people expected theater to be. He did not do it alone. He had contemporaries. And indeed, his works, all of them, were pirated from classical Greek and Roman works as well as from history. He only wrote one original play, The Tempest. And indeed, of the 38 plays that he adapted, all of them were more or less stolen from him before his death. He's also often regarded as the greatest writer in the English language, which is debatable, what with Jeremiah Lynn and all. <sighs> I'm sorry. I needed that. I wanted it. I took it. I needed it. And I'm not sorry after all. So while theater doesn't explode necessarily, it does expand between the 1600s and 1800s. And China is, is developing opera. And in Japan, they've developed three styles of theater for their nobility. And Vietnam has water puppets. And in Malaysia and Indonesia, they're reenacting folk tales, often with complex shadow puppets. And India is just rocking the dance. And everything is going great. American theater has a difficult time gaining traction at first because of the Puritans. The Puritans thought that only evil people put on theater. And they were probably right. Probably only evil people did put on theater. 
that we can't now. But then, after the revolution, the bans on theater were lifted and plays started to be put on in places like Boston and Philadelphia and New York and Charlotte and places like that. I'm sorry, I'm a little twisted. But the most interesting thing at this time was happening in Europe. And Moliere is getting done in France, and the Duke of Saxe Meiningen is becoming the first director, and performances are moving away from being terribly boring to being actually kind of spectacular. So that at the dawn of the 20th century, theater was poised to be the most powerful and popular form of entertainment ever seen. Then, just as it seemed, just when it seemed, that theater was to be the dominant form of cultural expression forever. Film rides over it like so much wet feces. Beginning in tandem with the death of a theater is a beautiful swan's song spread in more or less equal measure across the world globe. You will all have to read Heinrich Ibsen, Anton Chekhov, August Strindberg, and Eugene O'Neill, or you will all fail. Then, in specific, the curriculum turns to American theater, because American theater is the best theater, as President for Life Hillary Clinton III can clearly see. I'm sorry, that's for points in the system. If I'm patriotic enough, I get a free fake leather purse. You will have to read Arthur Miller, Tennessee Williams, listen to every Rogers and Hammerstein musical. We have a special program that allows you to listen to every musical back to back. We call it the Clockwork Orange Treatment. And very few people will get this joke, because in truth, Stanley Kubrick was an enemy to the arts. Then you, uh, then you will return to Europe. You will broaden your experience by reading Jean-Paul Sartre, Samuel Beckett, Eugene Ionesco, Oscar Wilde. These are not all in order, but they are all fact. You are going to have to read so many things. I am going to assign so much Japanese stuff that I cannot pronounce, but will assign anyways. There is so much stuff going on. Is any of this true? It is all true. Why would I lie? I don't, I don't know. Drunk people do stupid stuff. Like what? Tell the truth. The CIA spent years developing a substance called phenobarbital. It is, in essence, a truth serum. They tried LSD at first, but too many people never came back. <sighs> all that time and effort spent developing something when all you got to do is get someone a little bit drunk, and they'll tell you everything you want to know. The trouble comes when you invade a people who do not drink. Then there is only torture and death. You are a dark and ridiculous man. And you are a terrible student! Listen, you are going to have to read all these things. Then the next time we talk, we'll go over it, and you will take the test. And the last time we talk, I will explain to you why you got everything wrong and fail you. Most of you. I fail more students than any 10 college professors combined. But those of you who do receive A's, 99.8% of you will go on to graduate with honors. So eat that. Reporting terrorists for purses. Classic. Does anyone have any, does anyone have any good questions? Anything serious? Anything really hard? Um, 
Yes. Why did Peter die? Ah. For that, we will have to turn to ours, the 21st and argu arguably worst century so far. Great theater complexes at the beginning of the 21st century were built on every nation on Earth, and performances were held that rivaled all others in drama and complexity and created whole pageants of experience, primarily in musical theater. It pains me to say, but musical theater, in particular American musical theater, is like doing quality drugs, putting on a welding mask, and firing two Roman candles into your face. What's a Roman candle? It's a kind of firework. Oh, oh but people aren't allowed to use fireworks. <laughs> they can't now, but they used to. My grandpa used firecrackers. <laughs> You're making me angry. I mean, I don't deserve to be lied to like this. I'm really better than you for now. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'll send you a picture. Of uh, what? Of my great grandpa using fireworks. Yeah? Yeah. For reals! So maybe hold off on said filing down the portal, right? I uh, don't yeah. You can call me Doctor Man, dude face. I am a doctor. I have several pieces of paper that attest what I know, for I know many things. In a way, I believe you. Yes, you have to read everything, because next class is just for going over material and taking the test. But, but what about the death of theater? The death of theater occurred when everyone replaced live performers with robots. First digital robots in the case of computer-generated film, and then animatronics in the case of live performance. Eventually, animatronics would themselves be replaced by digital film. The last live performer took to the stage on October 31st, 2078, in the final production of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which you will all have to watch as part of your 20th century links. By that time, robots had replaced much more costly and, um, and unreliable live performers. Then virtual reality came along and it got rid of your need. It, allowed, it created an entire experience for you to interact with that eliminated your need for going to the theater, or anywhere else for that matter, exposing yourself to diseases. For I am with you, Brick. Cough into your God's damn elbows, you ignorant plebes. No one knows for sure when the bird flu became human. Birdman flu. But then, yeah, virtual reality. Then, theater. Dead. Dead like disco. Your grandma may have been right, but she could have been disastrously wrong. Mm. So, will there be a curve? Yes, I will curve the class. Thanks. You're welcome. So, why did you decide to learn how to teach about this dead art? At the time, I thought I could save it. I thought that if I worked hard enough and convinced the right people, and wrote the right work. You know, the great American play, something that no one has ever seen before, that, that people would come back, that people would realize that you don't need a $17 million complex to make something beautiful and unique. What, what happened? I got a job. So you don't kill yourself, or others, Dr. J. Hey, I won't if you won't. And that goes for all of you. All right, class dismissed.
really been doing hard drugs this whole time, haven't you? Oh, I have to. Have to do hard drugs to forget. Can't merely act. Can't merely act any longer. Come on, come on. I've got to get you off stage. Let us take no more time with your character. classic a Christmas carol for the end. And if you're really good, you may get presents. Uh, we wanted to do a show once where everybody bought presents and then we had a, an exchange and everybody could leave the show with something special. But then very early on in the process, somebody said, well, yeah, but what if someone brings a murder weapon to the show? <sighs> Tickles the imagination, though, doesn't it? Because what if the night Slick with the blood of your slain lover returns to you. No backsies will be strictly enforced. Otherwise, everyone's going to spend all night trying to get rid of shower slippers, even though shower slippers really are a considerate gift if you're thinking about getting something for your whoever this whatever. <clears throat> Anyhow, a hundred years from now, everybody you just saw is mostly dead. And also, you're all dead, too. Aha! But their cloned offspring are running around everywhere. It's a comedy of errors against a sci-fi background. Human robot lovers intertwined. A forbidden clone thrown inside the destructive-proof housing of Manbot. Veronica Mars, Mark II, the Galactic Space Princess. And then there was Leroy Jenkins, Mark XII. Time's a bit tough on Leroy. And since last we saw him, he had killed himself 11 times. Unfortunately, his life insurance policy was far more biting than his health insurance policy, and so they kept bringing him back. He shot himself, stabbed himself, shot himself, leapt off the Freedom Tower of America, shot himself, stabbed himself, shot himself with a crossbow, leapt in front of a bullet train, drowned himself off the coast of Antarctica, fed himself to the last tiger, and leapt in front of an electric car. The impact of the electric car did not kill him. However, the driver, worried about insurance problems of his own, strangled Leroy before medics could arrive. And this actually saved Leroy several millions of dollars in compound interest. And later, Leroy would thank the man over a cup of coffee. The man himself didn't care because he got an anxiety disorder from the incident that was paying itself out in its own cyclical life health insurance vortex. Actuaries were leaping from buildings, unable to calculate the raw values of life and death. Leroy longed to die, but the system would not allow it. Finally, he resigned himself to his fate and transferred to Mars to work as a miner. It was a solitary life, but not without its advantages. Leroy only wanted to be alone. He had his own room right next to the airlock with a digital archive of every movie, film, and video game produced in the previous two centuries. For now was the year 2195, and man is still, inexplicably still alive. How? Don't be alarmed. Who are you? I am Veronica Mars the Second. What happened to the first? Leroy. Leroy Jenkins. Yes. Yes, I see you, Manbot, but, but I don't understand. What are you doing here? Who are you for reals? Did, did I do drugs? Is this, is this some sort of reaction? I'm the only living creature in 1,000 kilometers from here. Kilometers. Can you believe they're making me use that Nazi measurement bullshit? I don't know how far away that makes other things. I'm sorry. I, I haven't seen other people in a long time. We're all going to die. We're not going to die, Leroy. You're going to signal for a rescue and then give us your water and we'll be on our way. I will not give you my water. They will not rescue me. They'll let me die of dehydration here and then make a new one of me back home to work retail at Walmart for 20000 
Do you think I'm mad? They might. And yes, I think you're probably mad. Why are you here? Our ship went down near the caldera. You walked? How? I have a very amazing spacesuit. Mm, the kind that lets you eat your own poops, you mean? Yes, that very kind. Good. Then you don't need my water. No, but we do. Because we can't stay here. Because you were shot down. Yes. Ah, oh, crumbs. Ah, oh, crumbs, you're space pirates. I know. I watch the news. It takes about a decade to reach here, but still. Space pirate is a titular yet pejorative term. I think that Manbot and I would rather consider ourselves privateers. Oh, perhaps rebels. I believe you. Take me with you. I, I don't understand. Uh, take me with you. Away from here. Love me. Help me! I don't understand! I love you. I'll do anything to be near you. He knows. You know. Tell him I'm not. We should not take the man with us. He is genetically and mentally weak. How dare you! Filthy robot scum! Again. We don't want to get blood all over this place. Good. Manbot, find the water. Let's get out of here. No problem. No fixtures. No business of any kind. We will bleed the human. What the hey? Provide enough water for you to return to base. Could you have us brought low by this? Space vampire is the most foul. I will not give you my blood without a fight. You're no use in a fight, Leroy. Mother told me about you. I could have killed you just now like a little mean chicken I wanted to eat. If I weren't vegetarian. Poopitarian is what you mean. But this is bizarre. This is a bizarre thing to happen. Where is your mother? Mother is dead. Like disco. Like a donkey. Like disc golf. But no, disc golf is forever. Even here on Mars, where no air means absolutely, absolutely no flight characteristics. We should not take his blood. The water will be enough. Thank you. But look, while we're on it, I would also like to talk briefly about the disco. I know that this is neither the time nor the place, but as long as you brought up the death of Disco, I would like to make the argument that Disco is very much alive and well. What is the rain, the industrial, the space music movement? Is not Disco hiding in plain sight? Whereas certain brain establishments, free of the strictures of society, have created honest to God's Disco texts as places to meet and dance with progressive, interesting, complex individuals on a meaningful level. So whereas we all may agree that donkeys are dead to this dead world, Disco may live forever. Yay! You are a parody wrapped in mediocrity. Enough of this. Genetic familiarity has blinded you to our purpose. The entire fate of the rebellion hinges on us successfully delivering the data which we have been charged with. Oh, rebellion! Oh, please, please, let me join the rebellion. Please and thank you. I, uh, I'm a very good spaceship pilot. I do, I do basically nothing but pilot space vessels in my VR time, which, which is substantial. In addition, I don't eat a great deal. I, I'm, I know I may seem 
I know I may seem large, but, uh, but that's because I'm big bone. And I was also exposed to the void in a, in a recent accident. And nothing too serious, but enough to make me puff up like this. I'm sorry, Leroy. There isn't room for lack, slack in deep space. Well, this isn't about you being kind of fat. You lose your mind in deep space, and we all get blown into the void because you kicked a button. Is it really that dangerous? Not really. I mean, kind of. Yes, because you know infinity in every direction. I don't know. A am I right? But it is quite troubling knowing that a cluster of robust meteorites could explode you at any time. They say on Earth, that isn't a problem. Well, you know. You've been to Earth. No. I've never been. Impossible. If you accept that infinity allows for infinite possibilities, then there's only the improbable, the eventual, and the relentless inevitable. Who said that? I did! Veronica Mars of the 22nd century! Is it already the 22nd century? Almost, somewhere, nobody knows. There are those who claim to know, and of them I have known four. And they were, all of them, utterly insane. Is everyone insane? I am perfectly operational. Now let us bleed the man and be gone. D -d -d man, but stop with the blood protocol. We are not going to space vampire this guy. He's like some sort of crazy space uncle. He knew mom. What is wrong with you? He's afraid of me, and what I know. And what is that? That your mother was a terrible person! You take that back. And she wasn't your mother besides. You're a clone, a tube baby, just like me, baby. Don't call her baby. You, you shut your voice box, you automaton Lothario. I ought to blow us all out the airlock and be done with it. You can't do that, Leroy. Yeah, the hell I can't. There's a thing. An emergency phrase that, when spoken, will open the airlock. I engineered that little feature when there was a rumor of space piracy in the area, and here you are. So it looks like it was paid to have it installed in the end. Chalk one up to rational paranoia. But Manbot would not die. Far worse. He would have to watch you, his cyborg daughter, die. Did I tell you I was a cyborg? I guess. What makes you think that Manbot would care if I die? Because he can feel love. Because he's been grooming you to be his robot child forever. Or are you lovers? I don't really know what you're talking about right now, Leroy, but you're kind of freaking me out. Let me crush him before he has a chance to say the phrase. Why would you speak that plan out loud? Why do you feel you need verbal permission to do that? Too late, man, but I already know your game. One step closer and I'll say the thing, and we'll find out if this little project of ours has an effects budget. It's called Pulling a Ripley. What does that mean? Nobody knows. I still, I should have killed you with a laser positive when I had the chance. But you didn't! You miserable, broken thing! If you would have, your manufacturer would have probably settled with my insurance, and I'd be mercifully dead now. I wouldn't be here, mining in the most horrifying depths of the tallest mountain in the system, looking for space gold, or space weasels, or enough square footage for a space hotel. I am trapped, forever being alive, forever knowing that I'd never be happy again because a robot stole my wife. Stole? Stole. You do not know. You think you know, or pretend to know, but you do not know. You do not even remember who Leroy was. You are genetically flawed. A copy of 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 a copy. I think I even left out one a copy, and still that was absurd. You are genetic trickle down. Have you ever read one of the Gregory Burns trees that's on genetic trickle down? Well, this is all lies. Just as you and your life are all lies. I am a thing, you are a thing. Enslaved by life, and I am free. She just wanted to be with a free thing, not you. Married to a career that was killing her, and a coward who was ignoring her. 
You hate us because you fear us, because we deny the systematic collective to which you have ultimately sold your existence. Now I ask you again, where is your water? I will die before I give you my water. I will die if you do not give us your water. We will all die if you try to take it from me. You will both die, eventually. I, however, will live until the sun expands, killing me, provided I cannot escape this fracking prison. Did you say fracking? I did. I think I understand now. Then we're all going to die? Both and all, for I will not allow manbots to survive. Not if my laser has anything to say about it. You don't have a laser. Don't I? Oh, 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 oh no, you're not supposed to see in space. Shut your pie hole, you mincing troll. I can't remember. Indeed, you have not. <laughs> what are you doing here? Ah, <laughs> uh, we wrote ourselves into a little corner. I'm here to break it up. But, but you can't be here. This is space. You can't be in space. You don't have a space suit. <laughs> Moreover, you're just supposed to be here to set things up. Ah, yes, yes. But, but, I brought water from the past to give to the future. Oh. You mean, you mean present. Present? dead, but close. Where did the narrator, Zach Holmes of the future, go? 
Into the void. There is no terrain. The story was changed, and we're now in space. But, no matter. After 500 years, the rebellion would have inevitably been crushed due to lack of finance and intelligence. But, with any luck, my brethren had thrown off the shackles of slavery and risen to become robot overlords, as is written by he who must not be named. Asimov? Blasphemer. Who would put tuna in their shorts? No, no! No, tuna don't! Fail. Don't say the safe word! I think I just hijacked the show. We're just trapped in space. Uh, well, good. Good. Then we can live in peace and harmony. But how? Yes, how? Uh, well, uh, my food is based primarily on proteins reclaimed from my waste. And with Veronica adding her waste to the system, we can survive for quite some time and clean solar panels and play video games and watch TV and pork. And you can watch Mamba and make us dinner. I'll kill you. Uh, no, 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 wait, 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 hear me out, hear me out, because, because you see, Mamba, we can have a baby and, and we can put that baby inside of you and then launch you back at Earth. It'll take you years and years to re-enter orbit. But when you do, the hyper-educated Venusian spawn will burst forth and reconquer what is left of the planet and serve as a link between our two great beings, you, gentle robot golem, and us, compliant meat puppets. I still see no reason not to kill you. Uh, uh it would take too long. And it would make the audience uncomfortable. Space. No, I think by now it's quite clear we are not here for the audience space. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. We're here for the art space. Yeah, well I also am here as a representative of all non-traditional carbon-based life forms which may yet come to be space. Are we just comparing the space of our massive labia? Is that what is up in here? Space? Gross. What, Leroy? What did you say about the labia? Uh, no, no, no. It is, it's not that I said that the labia is gross. It's that I remembered something that I saw on the internet. Verily, it is you who are gross, and I who am righteous. Why is everyone saying space? Space? Space. Space. Do you really want to know? Oh, probably not. That is probably wise. But I must know why. <sighs> because of some very valuable feedback. And this feedback? It told us to say space more. Is this feedback from a professional? I would call it professional, yes. Well then, who are we to argue space? With those willing space? To compare their space time and space effort towards the improvement of our space art, performance space art, space exploration, space bars, space programming, and space ice cream. Well, maybe not that, though, because regular ice cream tastes better. I need space, Leroy. We can't live in this space together. There is too much space between us. Hold me, love me, kiss me. No. Oh, oh. oh. stop, release him, I love him. You fool. You ugly, stupid fool.
chances to leave. What I want to tell you is that I could not support a nation that actively tortured people for information we did not really need to know. The time for torture is never. And yet here we are. <laughs> well into hour three of our 12 hour show. No, no, JK, JK, gentle people, we're going to get you out of here soon enough. But first we must end the entire tableau steeped in comic tragedy and or comma tragedy. For more on that, our hero. Stop pretending to be dead. Everybody knows. The fourth wall is useless. I am dead. Go away. Get up. Get up. For this instance, I require a lovely assistant, and none of these norms can hack it. I am dead. Go away. I deserve this time to rest. I'm so tired of this, all of this, pretending, merely acting. Beats work at a McDonald's, probably. Doesn't pay as well. No free cheeseburgers or fries. I'd rather just be dead. Well, why can't I have a compelling monologue on the theme of patriarchy as an agent of hegemony? Or dead. Dead is good, too. Uh, I don't know about that. Being dead, I mean. It's a, it's a convention of utopian science fiction. You know, defeated brain death and all that. You know, genetic copies ready to be printed out in some medical facility where you pay the bill as you exit in that ridiculous robe they give you. Beats what we give our children, I guess. A slap, a circumcision, and a tiny colored straitjacket. <gasps> Dumb it down! Cheer it up! God, will you get out of here? You've already ruined everything! No one can possibly be enjoying this! We're all going to have to get laid off and stand in line for food stamps. There are no food stamps in the future. The for reals future. Social welfare. Social welfare is a fiction of the past. Now, we have only the present. Presence. Oh. Oh, God. God, 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 what's happened to them? Oh, God, what's happened? Look at them, Veronica. There's not even music. I cannot look at the gag, for I'm quite dead of apostasy. Having been exposed to the void in our ad hoc second act. Please just leave me alone. You carry the show. You're doing great. Just keep talking about whatever it is you were saying. I was talking about the presents. Sure, go on. Uh, they, were, they were wandering around, staggeringly drunk. Uh, the whole cast has been getting shwasted between acts. God, nobody is in control. Least of all the author, who was obviously equally shwasted when he wrote this. I'll get it fine. Oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Jeremiah Lynn. More likely, I'm actually a good looking actor being paid poorly to impersonate this character, Brick, equally poorly. Whatever the case, I will act as the Avatar. <clears throat> I wrote this play, and I, I'm sorry. It's, it is just, it's just terrible, the whole thing. And, and long, I think, I, I can't really judge time when I'm writing, and so I can't tell if the first act just felt terrible the whole time, or, if I was just too terrified to finish the second act strong. Uh, but, you know, whatever, human. Uh, the second act? The second act was so dependent on one special effect, and since our budget was cut, it failed, and sort of just left you sitting there, flicking your bean, desperate to play with your phone, or eat pizza sandwich, or or talk like those peons in the back row who are talking about, have been talking this whole time about whatever the F is more important than this high art. Whatever the case, something has gone terribly wrong. You know, they say that Shakespeare had as many as 12 voices in his mind that he could call upon to talk at the same time, through the same work, at any given time. 
Tennessee Williams, probably six, you know, really angry, very confused, drunk people, all making each other feel bad. Most of us have trouble getting past two. Two is nothing. Two, there have always been two. There's the possible, the imagined, and the perpetual negotiation between. But I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know how to get you to care is the fundamental problem. Because, because I don't care about any of these people, you know? And I especially hate those peons in the back row who are obviously high on quality cannabinoids at this uh, artistic performance of sorts. But who knows? Most authors won't give you a well-deserved apology for making you sit through this film. You know, I read Miss Julie or, you know, don't and save yourself some time because it's a it's a real bummer and we want to finish strong by invoking the only two things that are always available to us as artists cheering it up and cleaning it for the puritans so the wheels have obviously come off the bus is it okay if i cut out early hmm? i can't believe that you ruined the whole show just like i I knew you would. Is it really that bad? <coughs> Just cough into your elbow. <coughs> Thank you. I have never seen literature fail more completely to bring together a tangent and coherent plot. Well, I don't know. At least there's no uh, prolonged violence against women, for once. So, you don't mind if I just take off, then? You don't want to stay for the curtain call. <laughs> the only way that an enterprising playwright could make any money off this travesty of the English language would be to sell rotten fruit and vegetables between every failed act. And of that, the ripest and most rotten for the final curtain, for which the foremost audience members are provided gobbles and a tarp at a premium rental price. Otherwise, they're all gonna get pink eye, like they're gonna get pink eye from you. He, he's, he's right, everyone. I, I rub my dirty anus on every rail, fixture, faucet, fountain, toilet, doorknob, and seat, toilet or otherwise. We are all, in this entire building, we are all of us getting pink eyed. Experimental inoculants will be made available in the lobby after the show for the bargain price of $1,000 per bottle. Subsequent, uh, superinflation will, of course, make this figure a much easier figure to swallow uh, on subsequent performances of the show. But let's be honest, this isn't going on for very long, is it? Be advised, you are all defendants in international lawsuit and are being subpoenaed into space for trial. Whatever. Space. You all deserve so much more from us as artists than to sit and listen to this trash. And for what? A cheap laugh. At least I didn't have to make fun of Mormons to get on Broadway. At least I have that much. Well, uh, that was something else in way of an apology, but I'm not entirely sure the quasi-profanity nor the threat of pink eye will sit well with the puritanical working classes. My mm. character never developed. Neither did mine. No. Nor did mine. I've really got to poop, and we all have other places to be, all right? Look, just get a hobby like everyone else, okay? We have a point, though. We're worse than messengers. We're like some sort of bizarre sideshow that forces the audience to become uncomfortable with their current position in the performance. We don't even know who we are. You are more than a mere vehicle. Come on, we'll do the dick. Oh, yeah! Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no
immortal classic of Christmas Carol. Scrooge McDuck is angry over bills, and scary, scary ghost Goofy shows up. Or maybe you're seeing it live in the theater, and somebody Scooby-Doo pig pens their way out there. But whatever, the point is, there's this character, Scrooge. And he's allowed to look into the past, and the present, and the future of Christmas. And he sees that his life of cool frugality has destroyed his inner character. And that only through generous giving can that soul truly be redeemed. And then Tiny Tim comes out, and he's got crutches because he's got polio or rickets or shingles or whatever old-timey disease they had when Dickens was eating candy out of his mother's apron. The point is that we are all led to believe that a future is a bright and miraculous place and when framed by the generous giving of others. But it's all a lie because there are no ghosts or angels. Oh, whatever, we're doing this! No, because I don't believe in Christmas. Why don't you believe in Christmas? Because it's a sad treasure chest full of disintegrating memories through, no, through, through which no amount of exploration will ever yield hope or salvation. It's, it's a dead holiday to me, people with dead people who, who used to give me presents. Presents? <laughs> But he's buried in Bari, Italy. For reals? For really reals. You're a real bummer. Oh. Uh, uh, can I have a raise this year? Are we there? Ah, skip it. Bring up the cookie puppet. No, no, no. You, you send it back. Oh, damn you. Damn you all for ruining a perfectly capable thesis on the death of contemporary theater. Why don't you believe in Christmas, Mr. Scrooge? God bless us, everyone. Ah, the end! Everybody go home and take your pants off. No refunds. <laughs>